Well, I think we have a real challenge right now because the changes in the Arctic are more dramatic than we've seen anywhere else. I mean, this year we had uh, some periods which where there was 20 degrees warmer than it would normally be. What is World Heritage and what is the role of the IUCN in conservation? So the World Heritage Conventions was designed to protect culture and nature. Uh, the part that had to do with nature was one that IUCN was looking after. When the time came to actually make the convention, it's now been housed at UNESCO in Paris uh, at the World Heritage Centre. But IUCN has written into the convention and our role is really to do evaluation of new sites. So when it comes to the Arctic, when it comes to polar uh, activities, also when it comes to the marine areas in the world, um, a lot of that work comes to, to my team. Uh, we are, uh, I think, in some sense, a, a, a fantastic organization because we have an opportunity to work on the crown jewels of nature. I mean, these are the places that everyone can say we really need to protect. And these are the places that are loved by people all around the world. So it's a fantastic opportunity. And for me personally, it's also been an opportunity to explore some of these things. So not only are we there to work on the protection of them, we're also on the long term there to, to sustain it and make sure that the plans and the work that the governments are doing actually um, over time takes care of the site. Why now this focus on new marine World Heritage sites? Well, we felt that there had actually been a lot of gaps, there are lots of beautiful, fantastic things in the Arctic that wasn't on the list. So this was identified by the members of the World Heritage um, Committee that we needed to work on it. And so this is a product of a collaboration between a number of organizations, the Natural Resources Defense Council, UNESCO's World Heritage Center, WWF, IUCN, and the Prince Albert II Foundation. So what are these proposed sites? So basically, we looked, as you can see on this map here, for a number of areas that have very specific characteristics. So one place many of us have heard about is the Bering Strait. This ecoregion has some fantastic things. There's a whale migration coming through it, for example, with grey whales, but other whales as well. Uh, there's lots of very uh, beautiful uh, seabird aggregations. Uh, there's a very rich marine life because it sort of is a gateway into the Arctic from the Pacific. Another place would be the high Arctic archipelagos, including Svalbard, Spitsbergen, which belongs to Norway, and two of the uh, Russian archipelagos as well. These are also very rich with, for example, polar bears and a number of other species like walruses. Um, so again, very iconic, very dramatic type of landscapes as well, which, which are you know, really worthy of protection. Another place would be uh, around Greenland. We have some of the largest fjord systems in the world. Uh, you know, fjords is basically a very deep, narrow uh, type of bay, which has uh, often a, a small entrance, which is a bit more um, narrow, uh, so that the water comes in and, and sort of resides in there for longer periods of time. There's also the uh, last area that we think will have multi-year sea ice. We're seeing a lot of changes right now, but this, we believe, uh, in the northern Canada, northern Greenland area is going to be one of those areas that will actually have ice for a long time. Because ice is incredibly important for things like polar bears. Now, how is climate change in the Arctic affecting the values of the World Heritage Organization? Well, I think we have a real challenge right now because the changes in the Arctic are more dramatic than we've seen anywhere else. I mean, this year we had uh, some periods which where there was 20 degrees warmer than it would normally be. And what we can imagine if it was 20 degrees warmer where we live, uh, you know, we would be <laughs> having a very difficult time. And of course, for the Arctic, you're starting from a pretty cold period, uh, but still we now have melting in a way that we haven't seen for ever before. Uh, so there's lots of changes, and of course, these will affect the wildlife that we have in these areas. Ultimately, lots of these areas will not have sea ice as much as they had before. The snow will be different, there'll be different patterns. Also, we'll probably see some shift in the sea currents, which then also will uh, change uh, the types of feeding opportunities there are for charismatic megafauna that we really care and want to protect in the uh, World Heritage Sites. Now, how is shipping paths and shipping traffic affecting the climate in this area? So, um, of course, with the melting of the ice, we open up all kinds of opportunities for new ships. And already we now have a significant growth in Arctic shipping. Uh, the good news is everyone's aware of the fact that uh, this is a very sensitive area that one needs to take good precautions and there has been a fair amount of work done both by the International Maritime Organization and 
and other uh, national bodies to try to ensure that. So when the icebreakers are there, they will actually make, make sure that, you know, that there's limited risk for having an accident. However, wherever you bring in huge ships like this, you will have risks. And sooner or later, we'll have an accident for sure that is of significant environmental nature. So then it's also a question of having the contingency plans, how we actually deal with this, what are the ways we can avoid having spills of oil, for example, which would reside for a very long period of time in the Arctic. Whereas if you're in the uh, warmer part of the world, this would perhaps go away much quicker. You would have more evaporation. You would not have as much uh, toxicity. Here, it really will affect the marine environment in a very, very damaging way. The other thing that people don't talk so much about is marine invasive species. So we have a number of animals that hitchhike basically across. Some of them are on plankton, very small in the early stages of their life. Other ones would be macro, they're attached, uh, for example, uh, to the hull. Now, those type of introductions can have very dramatic shifts. So basically what we're doing right now is we're taking the cockroaches and the rats of the sea and we're moving them across between the oceans. So that is something that worries us a lot. Uh, already in other parts of the world, we've seen very significant impact from having these type of um, transportations of, of invasive species. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Great to be back. And thank you at home for watching. Don't forget to click back to Dukascopy TV for more interviews on the Arctic. Goodbye for now.